Good evening, everyone. Here is Maria Kaliambu. I'm senior lecturer at the Hellenic Studies program at Yale University. Thank you very much to Vasiliki Chrysanthopoulou for the invitation. And thank you very much to all the organizers of, and the rest of the committee for this symposium. My new book project refers to the Greek American publications at the beginning of the 20th century. Today, I will present you one chapter regarding the educational books for the Greek children in America. Let me share with you my screen. So I hope you can see my PowerPoint. So I will present, as I mentioned to you, one chapter regarding the educational books for the Greek children in America. When Greeks started immigrating to America, they immediately realized the need for a solid education for themselves and for their children. The majority of the educational books for the Greek schools in America were imported from Greece. However, these imported books did not reflect the realities of the new home America. Greek children in America had different educational and pedagogical needs than the children attending the public schools in Greece. The imported books were not suitable for uh, both in terms of pedagogy, but also in aesthetics. Only in the 1930s were the first school books for Greek American children written and published in America. There, these were mostly readers and primers for the elementary schools. My paper today will offer an analysis of the first school books, four school books produced in the US. Their analysis show, shows which were the main foci of the community toward the development of Greek education in America. The first book I would like to, sh to show you is, I hope you can see, is the New Alphabet Book for the Greek Children by National Herald. In 1930, the publisher National Herald publishes in two parts the first school book which was created specifically for the children in America, written by Venetia Vidali. The newspaper National Herald advertises it as the Messiah of American Hellenism. In the preface, the publisher emphasizes the value of those educational books for the future of Hellenism. The Hellenism of future generations depends on the school books for the Greek kids in America. The school book which helps the teacher and the parents sets the psychological and intellectual foundation based on which the Hellenic identity of the child will be built. The publisher sees the read, this reader as a new contribution to the struggle to preserve and perpetuate the Greek language, the Greek tradition, and the Greek culture in America. Greece reacted very positively toward the first reader published in America. The Greek Minister of Education, Georgios Papandreou, congratulates the publisher and appraises this book publication as a national work indeed. For Papandreou, learning the language means also the preservation of the holy bonds between the Greeks in America with their motherland, Greece. To make the material more appealing to the young audience, the publisher inserts colorful images. Most likely, these images are copied from American uh, books and therefore depict the lifestyle of an American upper class, as you can see in those on your left side. The Greek touch, oh, sorry, here. The Greek touch is visible only through images of Greek soldiers in traditional costumes. The image accompanying the letter Epsilon, A, Elinopoulo, Greek child, depicts a young boy dressed in a folk soldier costume as Tsolias, as a Greek traditional soldier. And the text here reads, the Greek child is full of braveness, demonstrating the proudness of being Greek. There are efforts also to establish the holy bonds, as I mentioned, with Greece, including a few poems by well-known Greek poets, Zacharias Papandonio, Ioannis Polemis, and Georgios Drosinis, and of course, the national anthem by the national poet Dionysios Solomos. 
the poem on your right side uh, by Georgios Drosini's Greek soil describes the common ritual by immigrants to take Greek soil as an amulet against all odds with them in the longer journey to Xenitia, to the foreign lands. A ritual which shows a strong desire to be constantly connected with the homeland and to eventually return back home. The next book I would like to show you is the alphabet book of the Greek child in America. The next, it is, this is published in New York, 1935, by the author Eleni Konstantopoulou Rompapa, who was explicitly addressed towards Greek American kids. The author clearly states in the preface that the book's aim is to educate the children to form their characters and mostly to implant to their hearts the love to the values and ideals of the Greek family. The ultimate goal is to inspire in children the love towards the Greek letters and Greek environment. The book has clearly an indoctrinating character, particularly towards the formation of the Greek American identity. The text with a characteristic title, The Good Children, Takalapevia, narrates the proper behavior kids in America should have. They go first to the American school, then to the Greek school, every Sunday to the Sunday school and to the church. Of course, they have to be on time, quiet, respectful, eat their food and drink their milk. The text reflects the mixed everyday life of the kids in America, straddling between two schools, two languages and two cultures. Similar to adults, Greeks are depicted expressing their longing to visit Greeks, to visit Greece. On the right side, you see the picture and the uh, narrative says, I would like to go by the big boat to Greece, says one of the protagonist's children looking over the wide ocean. The text in the first volume, even if very brief, familiarize the young readers with the immigrants' experiences. The effective images of the blue sea and the long transatlantic trip sea evoke feelings of longing to the homeland and mediate the nostalgic notion of return. The third book I would like to show you is an anthology of, for school festivals. In 1935, the first Greek American anthology with theater dialogues for the school festivals was published in New York by D.C. Divery. The author, Mimis Dimitriou, an experienced teacher and at the school Aristotle in New York, who wants to fill a blank and make the Greek children to feel differently for every Greek thing. He even compares himself with the writer of the Greek revolution, Rigas Ferreos. As Ferreos inspired the enslaved Greeks to fight for their freedom, Similarly, Dimitriou wanted to enlighten Greek Americans to reach the free spirit through the Greek letters. A recurring topic throughout the anthology is the paramount importance of the Greek schools for the community. The future of the Greek communities is based on the good education of the young generation. The schools will teach them to become perfect Greek Americans who later will take care of the elderly take over the Greek communities and the management of the churches. Thus, children have to learn their ancestry, their religion and history. Another recurring topic in the collection is the return to Greece. And here you see the translation of the poem, uh, We Want Schools. The texts in this anthology are imbued with nationalistic statements. For instance, without Greece, the world would be in darkness. There wouldn't be culture, are the straightforward words of a student in a short theater play, which demonstrate the exceptional position of Greece. The anthology gives directives regarding the identity the young kids should obtain. The young children should become proud Greeks in America without forgetting their glorious ancestral roots. The anthology is important for one more reason. Its texts are to be presented in school festivals, scholikes yortes. These school performances are important not only for the education of the children, but also for the coherence of the whole community. Festivals offer the context for performance of ethnic identity. The ethnic messages become even more powerful when presented in theatrical texts where ideology is inserted within the educational framework. Festivals offer a very effective way to teach values and norms in an entertaining manner. 
Thus, books for those purposes, such as the anthology by Dimitriou, are sources for, sources for deciphering the ideological background by the educators. The last school book I would like to here is the Greek version of the poem I was just mentioning to you. And the last book I would like to mention. In 1934, the publisher National Herald and the author Platon Papazoglou published the school reader with the emblematic title, The Palaces of My Fatherland, Papatrikamu Palatia, which shows the pride Greeks in the US should have for their heritage. The young generation has inherited significant wealth equal to palaces. The implied message is keeping those worthy traditions. The reader is simply structured in 15 chapters, most of them followed by grammatical exercises, all in purist Greek. The contents cover three areas, religion, Greek history, and few themes related to Greek Americans. The children will learn about the achievements of Greeks in America. There are a few texts referring to the role Greek Americans played to American society. There is a hymn to Greek heroes who participated in the American wars, such as the famous and honored George Dilboy. The author praises mostly the laborers who, by their sweat and honorable blood, progressed this country. The aim of those texts is to help the young readers to position themselves within the Greek communities and within the American society as well. The overriding concern among educators was the language. The glossia, the glossia was the major issue that the authors had to address. Which linguistic form to choose, purist Greek or demotic? Whereas the first edition of the reader uses katharevusa, purist Greek, throughout the book, the consequent editions are in demotic Greek. However, the author Vavudis in the preface of the fourth edition was straightforward. This book is not propagandistic by suggesting one particular type of Greek. The author argues that he doesn't want to eliminate completely purist Greek since these grammatical forms are still spoken by the people. He offers two sections in grammar, one with exercises in demotic and one in purist, and suggests to the teachers to teach those archaic forms too. And I come to my conclusions. Education was of paramount importance for immigrants who demonstrated serious efforts to provide a proper education for their children. Educational books were part of the publishing agendas, agendas of the Greek publishers in the US. The majority of those books were imported from Greece, thus unfortunately did not address the different needs of the children in America. Since 1930s, in order to solve this problem, the few well-known Greek publishers in New York City produced the first school books in America, mostly spelling books and readers for the lower classes of elementary school. Authors were both men and women who lived in America and had experience teaching in the Greek schools. The publishers undertook serious efforts to produce aesthetically pleasing books by using colorful images in order to make them more appealing to the children. The first four school books printed in America in the 1930s, two spelling books, one reader, and one anthology of poems for school festivals, epitomized the ideology of the Greek education in America during the first half of the 20th century. The mission of the Greek schools was based on the very well-known ideological triptych, home, religion, family, patris, triskia, ecogenia, an ideology that prevailed in the Greek society since the beginning of the 20th century. Homeland, is one of the main folk in the school books. Children should learn, to le should learn to love both homes. A good Greek American child is the one which combines both American and Greek values. With the exception of the first spelling book by National Herald, the other school books have sections directly related to the lives of the Greek American children. Text and pictures show children playing in familiar playgrounds, going to their day or afternoon schools, talking about their Greek holidays, etc. Besides familiar everyday life scenes, there are also texts in the school books imbued with nostalgia to return to Greece. The selection of texts, particularly in the anthology, demonstrates the wish of the authors, which they want to transplant to their children, to love and never forget Greece. Religion and faith were part of the official education in Greece and therefore in diaspora too. Additionally, the Archdiocese in North America 
had direct control of approval of some of the educational books, such as the mentioned reader of the fourth grade, which played a role to the selection of particular texts. Let's not forget, the majority of the Greek schools were organized around the local churches. Besides the books approved by the church, all of them had several religious topics included, such as prayers, lessons about the life of Christ, Virgin Mary or saints, etc. Religion as part of the culture could not be absent by those pedagogical books. Moreover, family is the highest moral duty children's education should promote. All of the above mentioned school books emphasize the value of family. One would have expected that education and diaspora would have focused on the socialization of the children into American society and place Greek families in the background. However, Greek Americans continued prioritizing the value of family, kept their traditions, but also simultaneously challenged the American society. Family, home, and religion remain basic values for Greek Americans. Greek American educational institutions, schools, and churches are influential for the cultural resilience of Greeks in America. And above all is language. And as an overarching value, language connects with homeland, communicates with family members, and mediates religion. The Greek language holds a symbolic meaning in ethnic identification. Thus, keeping the language alive and transferring it to the next generations was the core concern for the educators. Read Greek and love the Greek letters was the ultimate goal of the books. These first school books published in the United States by Greeks are a testimony of the conscious efforts of the first generation undertook to keep alive the Greek language and culture in the diaspora. Thank you so much. Um.